Madden Luke's Sci-Fi Sanctuary. The year is 3013. The galaxy is scintillating in the mellow light. Two galactic pilgrims seek out vistas in the samurai future to bring forth the unity of the cosmic shaman. Opening the door of the Pantheon of Mystics, the evil sorcerer wizard powers the engine of science, seeking to forever alter the sacred balance, traveling on effervescent balls of summer fire. This week, when worlds collide. In the year 1951, George Powell told us the world was going to end and we should all abandon ship. In 2012, Roland Emmerich told us the world was going to end and we should all get off the planet. In 2020, maybe it'll finally happen. <laughs> <laughs> what is Bellis on its way? Nibiru? Probably. Maybe we're going to get Project Blue Beam and we'll get like a psychedelic alien invasion projecting the sky using Elon Musk's satellites. Or we're going to put our Elon Musk chip in our brain, <laughs> and then he can just show us aliens whenever he wants. There you go. Hey, here's some aliens for you folks. No aliens here. Um, well, at least right. not till the last shot, possibly. But There's um, an alien plant, which I guess counts. Yeah. <laughs> also, there was some, like, ruins, I think. That's my point. There's yeah. some pyramids in the last shot. <laughs> no, right. No. There's an alien, which in my head I thought was from this film. Oh. I was waiting to see it all film. And it's not from this film. No, I knew this film didn't have aliens. I wasn't waiting for that. Um, this, this alien has nothing but white people. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. We are going to get to that. <laughs> no, there's a very specific alien, which in my head, I remembered as being from this film, and it's not. Have and I now said, I want to know what film it's from. Have I said when it's worlds like, collide yet? Big ass eyes, like, humanoid. Uh, big ass. That sounds like a lot of aliens. I know. Uh, yeah, this is when worlds collide. I should, should, I mean, you clicked on the episode and the the description said when worlds collide, so I hope we know this already. But if you didn't, that's our film because the film being talked about by Matt and Luke at the Sci-Fi Sanctuary. I'm just trying to like play it, you know, differently. Every, every I know, time. I know, I know. I'm just, it's really. I just remembered that I never figured that out, and now it's really bugging me. Okay, <laughs> Luke, Luke's in a Hakata. He's in a search. Oh, maybe it's the one from. From somewhere. The one from a place. Oh, uh, no, it's not. Hmm. While he's doing that... the 50s? I'll just throw out there. I guess this is one of the first, like, major sci-fis. It's uh, before Forbidden Planet, which we've already oh, done. Oh, maybe it's these fuckers. Where's he from? Okay, I see. Oh, you just blew my mind, too. Sorry, he's showing me... Uh, it's like kind of a brain alien with the uh, goggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big old eyes. Um, could it be um, the the one that they did for Alien? I mean, the Alien's sort of kind of a remake. Oh, This Island Earth. Oh, This Island Earth. Okay, that's definitely not the proto-Alien. I can see why I got that confused with one world. I can see where you got that confused, too. And that's one we'll probably do at some point. Maybe in the Mystery Science Theater version. We'll see. <laughs> probably not. Anyway, yeah. So concerned. the whole film, I was waiting to see those guys. So you're I thought, like, oh, the other planet is going to have some aliens on it. There's going to be some action. There's going to be some... No. <laughs> no, it's a pretty conceptual film. Yeah. I mean, for 51, it's almost ambitious uh, with that elephant in the room that we've already yeah. made a little reference to. But uh, but let's leave the elephant over in the other room just for a moment. and uh... <laughs> Get out of the room, elephant. <laughs> Woo! No! Ow! No! He's shitting! The elephant is shitting! Oh, no! <laughs> so much shit! <laughs> Sorry, what am I? When I was a kid, I saw the elephant shit, and it's still in my mind. Have you ever seen the elephant? I can't remember if it's an elephant. I think it's an elephant shit on Blue Peter. On Blue Peter. Blue Peter is a children's TV show in oh. the UK where they like show you arts and crafts and interview celebrities. They had an elephant in the studio, and it did a big shit life on it. No, I was at the Atlanta <laughs> Zoo when I was like eight or ten or something. They, they, it was like the elephant doing tricks, and just in the middle of the tricks, it just like let it all hang out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, feces wise. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, George Powell's the director. is one of the first. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think I saw this one particularly early. I think I, you know, went to it directly because I'm like, oh, I want to see some seminal sci-fi. Right. Well, yeah, see, I definitely watched George Powell's War of the Worlds. 
many times. I have not I'm watched it many times. Maybe really once? Liked that film. Possibly not. Because <laughs> uh, I talked about doing that one, and you were like, oh, let's do When Worlds Collide first. Yeah, I, I like the whole, I like the worlds colliding, I guess. Mm, I'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> He'd already done a Destination Moon, which I had seen much younger. That's a good okay. one. I mean, maybe I should have suggested that one. but uh, Maybe I'll check that one out as well. <clears throat> this one just happened to be in my but DVD I, queue. I, right? I don't like hate this film or anything. I just... I was a bit disappointed by it. And not just because it didn't have the alien I thought it had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, this kind of gets into that, almost my educational film headspace. It's like like three shades removed right. from educational if I, film. If I'd gone, I think I should have gone into it expecting something a bit more like that. Okay. But this is a very dry film. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and very much, I guess, Hollywood system. Like, yeah. Like, like the... The not as awesome side of the Hollywood system, right? Where everyone's doing their job and it's coming through, and but there are interesting things. The, the, here. the spectacle and effects and concept is great. Mm. It's just all the film, <laughs> <laughs> the human element. Hey, you're saying we need to go get do some old sci-fi? Here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're yeah. in the old. We're in the old sci-fi. That that comes with baggage. Yeah. <laughs> but before we unpack that baggage, I will regale. Our listener with the story of this film, I suppose. Of when worlds cool up. Now to the day, the center of the sun, as the solar rip that flow, it's only just begun. How the dream of fire and flame, but the dreams are never the same. How the dream of a last eclipse, I often dream of the apocalypse. David Randall is a pilot flying top-secret information about the end of the world from South Africa to New York. Planet Zero will shortly pass by Earth, causing gravitational catastrophes, followed by a hammer blow from planet Bellis two weeks later. The heads, led by Dr. Cole Hendren, plan to pilot a prototype spaceship from Earth to Zero in the hopes that it will be a habitable new home. The whitest crew that ever lived works to make this happen, while Randall tries to bang Dr. Hendren's daughter, Joyce. The problem is, Joyce belongs to another scientist or something in this fracking universe. Anyway, Planet Zyra's flyby causes some bad shit to happen. The spaceship's corporate backer justifiably gets put up against the wall. Randall gets an in to port Dr. Hendren's daughter, and the Earth is destroyed. Hope those weird pyramids on new home planet Zyra work out for all the honkies. <laughs> There's really nothing, I mean, there's nothing much to say about the actors here, I guess. We, 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 but we've been talking about the lead, a little, uh, William Dare. Is Richard Dare. Uh, Richard Dare. See, I even got, yeah. I said William Dare, that was completely wrong when you get right down to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're pretty off the bullet. He's, he's, also, he's also not the professor from Gilligan's Island, the mystery science here, this island, Earth episode, uh, movie, like, threw me off, because yeah. they kept calling him that, but he is in this island, Earth. Yeah, he's also in um, a couple of Star Trek, stuff like that bit part character actor he's actually he does stand out in this yeah as just as like a charming likable actor with some screen presence with a bit of edge to him no he is the lead right no but just he's surrounded by such boring actors (laughs) he actually comes across like ten times better than the film he's in I think it's pretty much the same thing in The Silent Earth by the way <laughs> okay like, but like that first shot of him where he's like flying the airplane while simultaneously like making out with a flight attendant he's like <laughs> no he's hippies Flash Gordon right yeah <laughs> so. but like he's he, that felt like it was from a film 20 years later <laughs> that felt too cool to be in 1951 he's, he's very likable here this. I mean uh, there, there's some good things we're going to say about this film there's some bad things he's good yeah um, so uh, that's I think that's all we're going to say about the actors or the characters here. Unless uh, you got something else. I mean, the the doctor guy who's like his love rival. Oh, right. 
He's what, dweeb? He's right. <laughs> He's such a dweeb. Yes, yes. Like, every... There was never a believable love triangle. As soon as the lead enters the picture, he is just out of the picture. Right. Do a little show. Here you go, buddy. Yeah. Although I did like that bit where he almost... He almost abandoned him. Yeah. I thought, that. I thought that was pretty, like, yeah. I, I, honestly, this movie probably would have been a lot more interesting if he did abandon him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you've got the, the like, industrialist guy. Oh, yeah. The prick dude who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're... you're Okay, he's good enough. You're very happy to see his comeuppance. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, his, you know, the actor is giving unlikable. him enough, enough unlikable that you're very happy. But to like, see his he's he's like one of those villains where it's like, the actor didn't need to do much. You know, this guy's an asshole. I'm villainy McVillain. <laughs> yeah, like you know, I've got lots of money and I think I deserve to live, and everyone else should die. Like, well, that is a uh, unfortunately realistic trope, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I know you just got like generic scientists, women who are just there to look free. Yeah, I mean, and I, young. They all look so much younger than the men. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna put characters in like a, you know some quotations. Which, which I, I'll get into it now. I guess that is my biggest issue with this film. It it was just plotted and shot and done like a documentary. Well, it was all about the, the spectacle of the effects they were going to Right, have. but then the spectacle happens an hour in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. So that's just, it's just an hour of boring people telling you, don't worry, it gets good later. <laughs> <laughs> and like, this film is about the end of the world, right? And I didn't give a shit. <laughs> it was like, they George really Powell did. did make War of the Worlds, which has a really palpable sense of dread throughout the whole film. So when you're like, oh yeah, this is just like, you, but we might as well watch this one instead. I was expecting that feeling. Where from the moment the film starts, you feel like the Earth is about to get crushed by another planet. Yeah, this and I just didn't feel it. Even when it happened. <laughs> well, didn't <laughs> no they one sleep seemed through it? bothered, right? They sleep yeah. through it. And they're all just like, they get, to the, they get to the new planet and all cheer and celebrate. It's like, you're the last 40 human beings alive. The like, last 40 white people alive. Right. Do we get into that now? Here we go. <laughs> I feel like that needs its own segment. Okay. I want to just concentrate on the fact that this is a pretty boring film. Yeah. In, I, but, like, we've watched films where it's like, oh, it's boring in a way because it's an older film. But this, this is, is this was boring when it came out. I it think. did, I believe it did, like, the car ran out of gas. Like, their budget ran out. Right. And they weren't, they were, like, still working on it. That's why the, um... The the new uh, when you see Planet Zero at the end, they're like these ridiculous line sketches. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they literally didn't have any budget to make those into proper matte paintings anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the, to fix the problem, it didn't necessarily need more effects shots. Like we've got the ones we got were really good and oh, were yeah. enough. It's just the way it's paced and acted and written. <laughs> This is, I guess, again, where my love of educational films comes in. Oh, well, like I said, well, had I approached it as this kind, knowing it was this kind of film, I don't think I'd have been bothered. But because I've seen George Powell's War of the Worlds, mm. and because I thought I was going to be, you know, I thought I was going to have to face the end of the world in this film, <laughs> and I just didn't. Yeah. Destination Moon's uh, one of his other big ones. Um, also, it's it's when, when we do get to that, uh, I'll warn you now, yeah, it's a little slow. Right. It, it does have some cool stuff. I mean, this one has some cool stuff. Oh, it has yeah, some yeah, yeah. very innovative ideas, especially for its time. Yeah, and they're, like when we do get the scenes of destruction at the end, and like they're flying through like the flooded New York and stuff. Yeah, stuff was great. Like I the, think the rocket launch is uh, that's this is the only movie that did that. Yeah, <laughs> even now it's <laughs> great. But I think what it was, um, this film's perspective was too broad. It was jumping between characters. It was trying to show you newspapers, the flow of the whole world whereas what it should have done is just stuck with the main character at the same time showed everything through a perspective one this is a short movie right yeah I think they were trying to do the disaster movie thing without a template right like in the 70s you'd introduce all these characters they'd have their little dramas honestly even that's pretty boring but when is like the original like Poseidon Adventure Uh, like 75 or something okay well I mean there was the one before that the one that was Maybe uh, like the tw- the tens. <laughs> yeah, there's like the skyscrapers. Earth earthquake might have been the first one mm. that really. But started. even that's the seventies, right? Like I keep, but like I keep saying, by War of the Worlds, he got it so right. Mm. 
So it just it just surprised well, me that he doesn't in this one. This Maybe that's driver. because he had the book. Yeah, I mean Independence Day we talked about and that you know pretty much step by step follows the seventies disaster movie mm. template. See that one has a lot of characters, but it only gives you their point of view. Yeah, this it doesn't movie, try and show you the whole world. This movie just didn't know to do that. Mm. They're working from a Hollywood system point but of view. Books already knew how to do that. Yeah, but movies didn't know how to do yeah, books yet. I guess, I guess. Again, sci-fi. Yeah, I, mean, I, feel, I feel like we've watched <clears throat> older films that have done it better. Well, Metropolis did it better. Yeah. We'll get to King Shape Kong. of Things to Come. <laughs> yeah, King Kong did it better. Right, we'll yeah. get to Shape of Things to Come. That one does it better. This one still, it, it does have a weird charm, uh, again, coming from that. Like, I feel like it is reflecting the period in mm. good and bad ways very strongly. Yeah. Um, but it reflects the period more than a real slickly made film. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a... For the time, I guess, somewhat slickly made sci-fi in terms of effects or whatever. Yeah, well, and it had... It, if it had been like this and not had that svelte running yeah. time, I'd, like, legit hate it. Yeah. But over <laughs> 70 minutes, it was fine. Like, in 1951, you probably don't have access to Metropolis. You don't... You definitely don't have access to, like, a good cut of Metropolis. And mm. um, the other sci-fi you've got is, like, serial form Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon. This is yeah. it, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Forbidden yeah. Planets in the future, War of the Worlds is in the future, and, you know, much better sci fi is in the future. Yeah, I just went into it with the wrong expectations, I guess. Yeah. Because I can enjoy, like, this is a dry old sci fi film. This is a I dry love, old sci fi film. I love the motion picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I just went into it expecting something so much well, the motion more picture emotional has, and raw. The, the, the motion picture has grandeur. Mm. Star Trek, the motion picture, if you're this not. This is grandeur when it gets to it, right? At the end. Yeah, but, it, it does, but, um, yeah, it's. It's just, I mean, the rest of it's not. It's like, we got it for you at the end. But, and, and, yeah, it had the grandeur. It had the, you know, just like the awe aspect. It had the nostalgia. They don't have nostalgia here, so. True. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, oh, just like did read this bit of uh, Star Trek trivia knowledge this morning. Mm-hmm. That um, there are crates on the Genesis, not the Genesis planet, in the Genesis cave that are marked uh, Zyra and Bellis. Oh, cool. So, Star Trek did acknowledge this film a bit, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, would this have been one of the first alien planets we saw in cinema? Is Flash Gordon count? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not counting the, the, pre, the serials, I'm talking... You're talking cinema. actual, like, like feature movies. Yeah. This is pretty close to the start of it. Lost World is not... That's Antarctica. Um, yeah, yeah, the, I mentioned Shape of Things to Come and uh, Metropolis, both of which have zero alien stuff. But the sophistication at this time, you're talking about books, right? I mean, yeah. around this time, is Asimov writing Foundation at this time. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's like well, the H- hardest sci-fi H.G. H- Wells had written in the previous century. <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's own, again, it's just films are behind. <laughs> yeah. But this movie just had no template. So it's, it's, it is, it's got a machete and it's going through the jungle, you know, and mm. not making the cleanest cuts. But it is making a path through the jungle, which... Which yeah. people will make use of in the future. Oh yeah, as as a piece of history, this film is you know stupendous. Yeah, and weirdly, I have watched this one several times. I, mean, I, I see, I completely see what you're saying. It's kind of boring, mm. but at the same time, it doesn't bore me. I it's I'm not never going to watch it again. I think if I watch it again, knowing what I'm going in for, I will actually kind of enjoy it. If you say I'm not never going to watch it again, that actually means you're never going to watch it again, doesn't it? I'm not never. No, I mean I'm going to watch never. it again. I'm not never. I'm not. Okay, I'm sorry. Not Never going to watch. Oh, okay. I had to work I out your double to... negative there. Okay. They really fuck with you, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's happened a couple of times. <laughs> I just, you know, I just felt like calling that out and, uh, you know, uh, dissecting it and uh, taking a look at it. And it's, yeah, okay, you seem right. But I, when I did, nothing is not political. You got freaked out by that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, if you want to freak me out, come on Facebook where you'll find me and get throw me some double negatives and see how I respond. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Matt's not not a cunt. <laughs> I don't not hate your podcast. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, but like, if I go to it just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to watch some very dry 50s sci-fi with fast talking, that kind of acting and stuff. Hmm. It's a fun romp, but I went into it with very much the wrong expectations. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going grammar now. We're treading water. I think we have to bring the elephant back in. All right, should we uh, bring in the ele- section and bring him in? Bring in the elephant. Oh, I thought we were going to start a new section. I thought you were going to give me an elephant sound. I was going to do it at the start of the next section. Oh, okay. I was going to literally go out of the room and get you to say elephant come in and then like run into the room making elephant I'm not sense. editing this. Now everyone knows what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you.
There's only one way. There's only one way we're going to get the elephant in this room. He needs an elephant song. Space is the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Space Woo! is the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Space is the place. Yeah. I went on that ship. I went on the Space is the Place ship. It's cool a ship as well. This is a very generic silver rocket. <laughs> Silver rocket. Sorry, it's Sonic song. It got stuck in my head. What those scientists that. compensating for? That's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, Space is the Place made a statement with the um, crew of their ship. <laughs> this film made a statement as well, even if it didn't mean to. <laughs> I don't think it meant to, but... First, let, let, let's, let's go a little light first. Um, there's one child on the ship. Yeah. <laughs> They just murdered all the children on the planet. Well, not yeah. murdered, but they let them die except for this one dude. I mean, you got 40. I feel like half of the... Hell, you get 50 if you let children on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I guess they would, didn't know how like difficult life was going to be when they got there. Yeah. So better just let them all die instantly when <laughs> Bella the earth. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a dark decision to make. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, uh, what, that's, they really didn't notice that, I think, because I think even now people notice, might not be like, wait a minute, they got one child on the ship. Because, I mean, the, the If you had zero children, I'd question it less. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's the one that makes you think about it. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, they got one child on the ship. And then, and then how many people of color do they have on the ship? Well, because you'd mentioned it to me a little while back, like, oh, yeah, I was watching... Well, was glad and thought, oh, where are all the black people? And I was like, oh, yeah, in 50s film. Like, and then when I was watching it myself, and I, it hit me like halfway through, like, wait, they're building an arc and they're all white. <laughs> <laughs> like, the movie starts in South Africa yeah. and there's no black people. The people in the UN, I think they have a couple Indians and a couple Middle Easters that look like they're being played by white people. I'm not sure, yeah. They make a passing reference to other countries are also building arcs. Right. So does that mean that we got like 20 arcs land? So we got 20 arcs landing on Cyrus. Right, that's, but cool, that's but they should still, be a little more mixed, maybe? That, that's still, that means that they think America is all white. Yeah. Which is even more fucked, maybe. <laughs> I mean, 1950, I guess, in pop culture it was, but in reality it certainly wasn't. No, right? <laughs> So, um, you know, black lives do not matter in this movie. They really don't in this movie, yeah. Like, and, like, yeah, you say, oh, they, it wasn't deliberate. That doesn't excuse it. Right. They are still reflecting their beliefs through the art they're making, which is that if I was to save 40 human beings, they would all be white. And you want to give George Powell a little bit, like, maybe he could have been, like, a little more progressive and, like, done that. But he's not Gene Roddenberry. He's also quoting Bible verses the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, does he do that more with the world? War, he war of makes, the world. He inserts some religious elements that were not there in the. Because I think George the... Powell was down with the fundamentalists, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. um, H. G. Wells, I think, was fairly atheist. Yeah, or at least not particularly religious. Whereas, honestly, I think he's a bit of a eugenicist, but <laughs> we'll get to that at a different time. <laughs> um, it gets it. No, mo people often think that, but he was being satirical in most of those works. Okay, well, shape of things <laughs> has come. I, I've said it like five times already. That yeah, that I guess is, that one's. That's been on my mind Stuff the whole time we've been doing this podcast, if anyone's wondering. So um, we just, we did Metropolis first and we're doing this first. <laughs> but the, so the book version of War of the World is all about evolution and biology and science. And the, well, the parson appears and is basically a pathetic character. <laughs> Whereas in George Powell's version, A, they add a religious element to the voiceover. He, the film ends with him in a church and that's where salvation happens. Mm. And the Parson character is more like a heroic, tragic figure. I think I've got the same boner for um, that you've got for War of the Worlds for the Time Machine. Is that also George Powell? I don't think it's George Powell, but it is H.G. Wells. It's definitely H.G. Wells, but I, I know the book itself has um, is uh, like about basically about economics, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. which doesn't come through in the movie. I, I do like the movie, and that's another one I'm sure we'll get to. Yeah, um, the how... only H.G. Wells I've actually properly read is War of the Worlds, Time Machine, and The Invisible Man. I think that's about the same for I've me. Got, I've got this whole collection on my Kindle, and I tip into it now and then. But. Yeah, I, I, I know, for War of the Worlds, I definitely know the book a lot better, and then once the Tom Cruise one showed up, I, I've seen that one more in the George well, Powell. War of the Worlds, the one which I'm most familiar with and most in love with is the musical. Oh, right, we discussed yeah. that already. From the musical, the book, and then both films I like. But the War of the, yeah, the Tom Cruise one I prefer. I think I got that I like somewhere tripods. on my hard drive. I'll have to go trial that one out for you. Well, then. <laughs> The uh, War of the Worlds musical. I think I, I think yeah, I have I've it. I just it. haven't. I've got both on versions on my phone. <laughs> okay. Should I watch it or just listen? Uh, oh, just listen. 
Okay. Yeah, the, the only visual version is the stage play. Right. Which I've been to. You, I know. I'm just like, yeah. But no, yeah, it's, it's an audio experience, really. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, not... the, the correct version is just to listen to it and have the paintings from the record. Okay. Oh, there, there. I need that little extra knowledge. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking up the... Uh, oh, he did direct the time machine. Oh, cool. Sorry, it was bugging me. I had to check. Guess he was a big... So, Apparently, Worlds Collide was also based on a novel. Time Machine doesn't get into the... Um... Oh, was, I think Worlds Collide is based on a couple of novels, actually. But well, um... Apparently, there's a 33 novel called When Worlds Collide. Yeah, I think the time machine doesn't have the religious edge. Okay. Maybe shaving that off was like a good call on George Powell's part. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll get to the time machine. I do that. That's a fantastic movie. Um, mm. I also don't hate the more recent one. I haven't seen that one. Have you not seen it? I've not seen that oh. one. Okay. Uh, in terms it of it gets this a lot of stick, but it's actually okay. I, I guess, uh, yeah, we've already, I guess we've already decided that we'll, we'd rather be on Sunrise ship if they'll, if they'll have us, which they yeah, might not, but, but. <laughs> <laughs> but this ship won't have them, so <laughs> there's, yeah. I, I don't want to be on this ship. These, what the, what's up with the monk robes, man? I, I thought that was meant to be like a, like an insulated survival suit thing. Okay, it felt very Heaven's Gate now. It did a bit. Heaven's Gate sense. had the swank Nikes at least, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least Heaven's Gate wanted to be on a cool spaceship. What did I... I just watched something... Oh, I was watching... Uh, uh, if, if Dr. Aaron McDonald's listening, I, I did play Contact for my daughter, mostly. We're working through it. But um, oh, cool. Yeah, I noticed I actually had a clip of Heaven's Gate in there. Oh, oh you know who's... I found out, surprisingly, is into Contact? Who's that? Andrew from work. Well, he should be. It's a good movie. Yeah, but <laughs> he just very rarely brings up anything geeky and sci-fi. Yeah. Like, Oh, what's that film with? And I was like, oh, Contact? He's like, yeah, 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 I like that one. We'll be holding off of that because we just did Interstellar. Thing. Yeah, and we've done a lot of modern stuff recently. Right. We, I, mean, I guess that's like 20, 30 years old now. We'll just give, yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll always give a shout out to Contact when the uh, hmm. when the opportunity presents itself. Um, when Worlds Collide does not get a shout out. Uh, so, I don't know. Is, is it just like a mission here? Is there anything else that, with their no diversity crew? I'd you can't... Young women, older men. That's very Doctor Strange love, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, it, it just reflects... This is what Doctor Strange have wanted. Yeah. This is the ship he wanted. <laughs> this film just reflects the attitudes of the time it was made. Mm. And in, by doing so, it damns them. And it, the film is damned and the attitudes are yeah, damned. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is, is about, about the same time uh, Ralph Ellison wrote Invisible Man. Have you read that? No, I've read The Invisible Man. No, no, inv that's H.G. Wells. Uh, Invisible Man... In blah, 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 blah. Invisible Man is completely different. It's uh, Harlan, not Harlan Ellison, God, Ralph, Ralph Ellison. Ellison thank you. It. Yes, I got it right the first time. <laughs> anyway, um, it's it's a thing about basically um, the story of a black man who's invisible in society. Right. Like he's not like sci-fi invisible. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a better book, and to be perfectly honest, read that. Uh, black Boy, man, good books out there. Oh yeah. Native yeah. Son. Yeah, yeah I if know. You want to have a Harlem re Renaissance read through? There's some three titles that'll. You know, wash the taste of when worlds collide out of your mouth. I keep being reminded that I should read real books and watch real films. But there's three for I don't want to. I just want to watch space things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not so much space in those, and a little pressure, but they're they are quite good books. Yeah, I should. So, <laughs> um, are we gonna let are we gonna let the elephant off the hook now? The elephant's on a hook currently. I'm not letting George Powell off the hook. We're not letting George Powell off the hook, at but, least not to later movies. I mean, never. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I, how much was Hollywood system, though? I mean... Yeah, yeah. I, I, you can't 100% change. Yeah, I mean, maybe it didn't occur to him, but no one pushed the point, and if he had pushed the point, he would have gotten resistance anyway. But that doesn't... Being down with the... With the uh, that's a reason. It's not an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, this is what happened in 1951, which yeah. is not an excuse. It, like, I, it just, I guess it just does point to how important Gene Roddenberry was. Yes. <laughs> like, sci-fi is meant to be... No, he's like, future, my right? crew, everyone needs to, like, be a little bit different. But he's the only... It wasn't until then that the future meant socially progressive, not just technologically. Right. Yeah, this is all technology, isn't it? Well, we had the same thing when we watched Forbidden Planet, right? It's almost Star Trek, mm. but that was what was missing. Yeah, as, as much rainbows as I blow up Asimov's ass, I think he just doesn't even get down to it. I mean, you, you visualize in your mind, you're reading the book, they could be anybody, so... Oh, yeah, because Asimov doesn't care about human beings at all, right? <laughs> just ideas. <laughs> it, yes, uh, yeah, no one, you know, we barely have characters, and usually when he does have a strong character, the book isn't one of his best, so... <laughs> right. 
Um, and, and this isn't one of the best sci-fi, but it's it's you know if if you're taking a sci-fi university course, you're you're definitely going to have to have have work through this one, and and you I don't think you'll hate it. Yeah, if you just go in thinking, okay, so the film's not gonna like give me a thrill a minute, but I'm gonna have some cool rocket ships and disasters and effects, and you know I'm gonna have a time capsule of the fifties. It does that. So I don't know. Shall we send the elephant out and actually have a geek out about the effects, which we don't always do? Okay. Bye, elephant. Plutonium. Neptunium. Zeronium. Curium. Promethium. Cold fusion. Uranium. Thorium. Radium. Polonium. So, yeah, the effects. That's something that was, again, the budget ran out in this movie. It was not fully realized. But what they were able to do was pretty cool. Do you know specifically where they ran out? Um, Is it just when they get to Lara? That's a that's a clear marker. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, you mentioned the books I said it was based on two. The second one they didn't get to, right? Because that's After Worlds Collide. Oh. When Worlds Collide, After Worlds Collide. I see. Yeah, so that's would be the, maybe that's why there's pyramids. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so that was After Worlds Collide. Uh, but yeah, yeah, those those drawings are, that, those were definitely like the conceptual drawings and not yeah, because it's like, it's like the final money shot of the film. Yeah. And it pans around, and I'm just like, ooh. If you know, it's, uh, Sunk in New York, I believe, is just a freeze frame, too. Yeah, but it looks good. It looks good, but that was another case where they had run out of money because the idea was to do that properly. Yeah, yeah, but then you still get, like, the shots of the helicopter flying over, like, submerged rooftops and stuff. So it, it meshes together into looking very impressive. We don't get the worlds actually colliding, do we? We do a bit, and it. It's like you see it through a window. Yeah. While everyone's asleep. Space is a place I actually did it better. Yeah, that, that, that <laughs> Earth explosion was surprisingly great. <laughs> Even though it was like totally like like five cent budget, but fantastic. Yeah. Sometimes five cent budget's all you need. They had to buy the orange or whatever it was. Yeah. Watermelon, maybe. But yeah. it was because it's creativity, right? It's mm. not necessarily throwing money at a problem. And, uh, if you just throw money at a problem, you get iRobot. <laughs> I'm going to shout this louder when we get to Time Machine, but. Yeah, creativity and effects is the biggest thing. I love the the time machine for me is one of the best effects movies ever, even though half of the effects look like crap. <laughs> and the effects here definitely don't look good to the modern eye, but they they just have creativity. Yeah, and there is a spectacle to them. Yeah, like when you see like the big ramp they built for the spaceship, and when it's oh, that's over. so great. Yeah, 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 yeah. When when you're actually seeing the disasters happen, a lot of it does look really good. The, when Zira passes, uh, they yeah. do a nice little disaster thing there. Yeah, yeah that, that's the bit I'm thinking about. The if they knew Zero was coming, why did they keep the rocket right on the precipice? Don't, you can't, I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just, Maybe that's just the only way it could launch. Mm. <laughs> that was a weird way to launch a rocket. I guess no one had really launched rockets. No, yet, this but... is t- like, what, like eight years for Sputnik, so. <laughs> but like they'd, wa- they'd launched like V2s. Did they have tracks? <laughs> Are they on tracks on the launch pad? I don't, well, they're on they tracks to get them into position. Yeah. But they don't, like, literally go up some tracks. like a. Anyway, uh, Operation Paperclip had not gotten all the Nazis in place yet, so they really didn't know how they were going to do it. The Nazis just told them what crew to put on the ship, I guess. Right. <laughs> um... Oh, something I do like is uh, Randall partying like it's 1999. Just when he does find out the news he's carrying, he starts like just slamming down martinis. That's yeah, it. yeah well, like, like the thin man. What else are you going to do, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else do I got in the, the notes here? You go rain in that D, daughter. Yeah, dad's pretty weird. He's like, just if we do want to love triangle a bit. Yeah, like it's just like, free loving dad. Yeah, I like this. I like this um, Harrison Ford prototype better. Just go chase him. Yeah, that was weird. Well, and then, and then she's just like, she's like, oh, I went to him. He's like, cool, he can come to the alien planet then. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, here's another. Here's one of the weirder ticks on the Matt Nuke's uh, Sci-Fi Sanctuary bingo thing is 
Matt calls out soundtracks ripping off Shostakovich. Okay. Here's another one. <laughs> it's uh, they, They're basically recycling his themes from his Fifth Symphony. To be fair, I can't remember any music from this film. I do just because it was ripping off Shostakovich. Right. right. Uh, if you want to listen to it again, I'll send you there. Fifth okay. Symphony. Boy, yeah, this wasn't a film where the soundtrack stood out to me. Oh, oh. <laughs> the announcer. You've only got two weeks left. They need a radar for MASH or something. Yeah, yeah. He was really just like... <laughs> he reminded like me of... Like a baseball announcer. <laughs> I know. He, he made me think of... Um, um, oh, God. What's it? It's always sending a Philadelphia actor. Charlie Day. All right. Doing his Manic Spaceman Lego movie. It made me think of okay, that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've only got two weeks left, people. Go. Do it. Do it. <laughs> but like, yeah, he... I, well, that's, that's back to my main point. It never felt like anyone in this film thought the world was going to end. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from when the main guy's getting drunk. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just throwing darts at the board now, but um, back on the effects, I was like, late, su- late 70s Superman didn't really do much better for the end of the world. Well, the end of California, at least. Uh, yeah. No, oh, yeah, yeah. The That's what I said. The disaster effects in here are spot on. Yeah, I'm just... Oh, here's one. Um, I, I made a note, because they have one child in the movie, because mm. they're not women and children first. I kind of wish, like Batman Begins, like, this child also looked like Joffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he was a little bit of a little creepy blonde kid. But... I know, I just, like, in my mind, I just had to plaster that actor's face on him, because that just made it so much more entertaining. <laughs> there was... That bit where they go out on their, like, little mis- mission of mercy, they just left those people on that little island, knowing that the world is going to end <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Enjoy your island, suckers! Yeah. <laughs> they might as well have just gone over and bombed them and put them out of their misery. <laughs> That's the American way. <laughs> Bomb them into liberty, you know. <laughs> You're free now, motherfuckers! All your individual atoms are free from being part of your body. <laughs> we freed you from samsara. <laughs> That's a dark way to do it. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. The one where Doctor Strange love how the um how the millionaire. I think he's a millionaire, not a billionaire, right? We don't have billionaires. Yeah, yeah. The... I like how he can walk at the last second, just like Doctor Strange love. Yeah, I can walk. World blows up. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did want to see. Him. I did like it when he had a gun under his blanket and shot the dude. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I just, I just thought we needed a few Gaddafi shots with him. Gaddafi. Yeah, Libyan. I know who Gaddafi is. I'm just not sure what you're getting at. He was taken out in the the oh, right. or something. Yeah. <laughs> you mean the, the 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 people should have got him? Gaddafi didn't like deserve it, probably, but this guy did. He probably deserved it a bit. <laughs> he deserved it a bit, but um, basically he was trying to take his money off of the U.S. standard, so uh-huh. that's probably why he went out. <laughs> yep. Was, uh, I mean, let's face it, Libya's a shittier place now than it was then. And it yeah. might have been shitty then, but it's worse now. <laughs> it's funny how that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Let America come into your business, see what happens. <laughs> I saw a great meme the other day. It was the clip from whichever Avengers film it is where Cap like, gets the text and goes to see Peggy. But he's just sat there and he gets a text and it's like um, from the CIA mm. or from a South American country. And it's like, we just democratically elected a leftist president. And it, America's like, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> like, runs out of the room. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that's a cute cue where this is like August 31st. So, you know, rest in peace, Chadwick. We just heard that. Yeah, news. rest in power. That was, a, that was a hardcore bummer. So, that was, yeah, yeah it's a real shocker. So, especially in this particularly honky film let's call out like a you know uh let's call out a black panther <laughs> yeah part of me feels like we should do black panther but part of me feels like we should just wait and do it that's kind of why i just properly. did it now <laughs> yeah so yeah we'll, we'll do it properly it's, I, honestly at some point we're going to do the whole marvel run but um, I, I still think that should be a patreon thing that's that's a lot of work <laughs> i wasn't going to say it straight out but yeah that might be a patreon thing so <laughs> right now we, we're definitely down with that dude he's uh Awesome. He's more awesome on screen than this cast combined, including our, our Star Trek alumni. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and a very awesome guy off screen as yes. well. So, sorely missed. <laughs>
I don't always pose it to you this directly, unlike some other shows I listen to, but uh, does this film hold up? It depends on the context in which you're watching it. <laughs> if I'm just like, it's Saturday night, I've got some popcorn, I'm going to sit down and watch a film, no. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm a guy who's, you know, hosting something called the Sci-Fi Sanctuary and wants to watch a bunch of sci-fi, yeah, kind of. <laughs> like, it's, if you're watching all the classic sci-fi, you can't skip this one. Yeah, I brought up Invisible Man and Black Boy Native Son because those are things I had to read in school mm. and enjoyed quite well. Right. You know, there's other books you have to read in school. I, I never made it through a Charles Dickens novel. Yeah, me too. I got an A in my English class. I passed every test except for Great Expectations. It wasn't what I expected. I got a 67 because I gave up after Chapter 3 and just guessed on the test because I knew I'd still get an A. Yeah. So. <laughs> one of my... During uh, high school English, one of our grades was for a... Um, or... or Perform like you know, giving a mm. speech. The very we got like we basically did one like at the end of each term, and the highest score you got was the one that counted. I got full marks on the first one, so I just had free reign to talk shit for two years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, all my subsequent ones were just basically stand up routines. Right. So if you got to take a test on this one, make it the one that like doesn't count. Yeah, is uh, what I'm working at there. I also think it is like. We complained about, you know, the elephant in the room. He's out of the room now. But, like, it's worth seeing these films to actually, like, acknowledge that that is a thing. Right. People talk these days about, like, forced diversity. But you have to force it for it to be that not diverse. Yeah, this film could have used someone forcing it. Just if they went... Well, no, but, I mean, someone did force it. If you just go down to the docks and, like, okay, we need 40 extras... They don't all come back white unless you've gone out of your way to do that. Right, even the UN people, I, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure those are white people made up to look um, ethnic. But like it had scenes set in Africa, <laughs> and they cast all white guys. That's a deliberate choice. Someone did that. To be honest, in the 50s, that probably was the case of the observatory, but... Yeah, yeah, but still, right? <laughs> but still, of course. Like, each casting decision here was a conscious decision. Mm. And I refuse to believe that black people just weren't around at all. I mean, they lived in L.A. at the time, you know? Yeah, and you're putting together, like, a big cast of extras. Maybe, like, the main roles, maybe in the Hollywood system, there weren't black people to choose from. But someone consciously chose to do this. So when people talk about, like, oh, they're forcing diversity down my throats, in the past, they were forcing whiteness down our throats. I'm just going to throw this out, and uh, and I'm, like, setting a fire here. So... (laughs) Um, Recently, Gone with the Wind is being basically cancelled as a movie. And probably, in the most cases, act, you know, you would, right? But that is a movie that actually did cast black actors in subservient roles. But they actually did that, which this movie didn't even think about. Right. So that movie thought about it. Of course, they're also, you know, by making it like Civil War, they're going straight for the... the um, controversial jugular there too or this film avoids that but that Mm. film did try and it's recently I don't even like it I'm not defending the movie I don't like Gone with the Wind to be honest but that movie's come under fire recently where they actually did try there's a now I know a lot of people a lot of cunts (laughs) talk about like oh cancel culture it's ruining everything oh you can't I don't believe that I think it is good that Mm. when powerful people do this shit they get called out for it um, I do think a lot of this, like, oh, we should take this episode off the air, we should stop watching this old movie, that's performative. Mm. That No one who's out there right now protesting that the police should stop shooting black men <laughs> gives a shit about Gone with the Wind. Yeah. The people who actually care about these issues are not the people who are saying... Should no, the, the ar- films, this, right? this was like a Karen argument, basically, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, they're saying, like, oh, you know, we're going to stop airing the episode where blackface happens as, like, a tokenistic gesture so they don't have to actually change any of the power structures. Yeah. So, like, any time you hear someone saying, like, oh, I can't believe the council have gone with the wind, just ask yourself, who's done that? <laughs> because it isn't the people who actually have anything to say. No, it's, the um, people, yeah, the people... It's some white guy in an office <laughs> trying to pretend he's woke while still continuing to take home way more money than he deserves to only share that money with other white men. And yeah. generally shit on minorities. No, it's like you feel good looking at that sort of topic, but you're doing nothing, right? Like yeah. the person that actually needs 
that is in the midst of a struggle couldn't give less of a shit about Gone with the Wind. So. And like when people say like, oh, it's important collide. to preserve history, right? <laughs> that is what something like Gone with the Wind does. Where it's like, oh, we can look at this in its context and understand these ideas. And when worlds collide, right? It doesn't mean you have to keep up statues of Confederate generals, <laughs> right? Like, a statue is not just... You don't go there to learn history. You go to a statue to celebrate someone. So, like, yeah, tear down the statues of slave owners and genocidal maniacs like Winston Churchill. Have but you keep stuff in, like, you know, a library for when you actually want to learn. You can go and watch it. Have we discussed what we have in Atlanta? You've shown me, yeah, yeah your okay. freaking... We got a big we, laser show Confederate guy. It's like carved on the side of a mountain. And that so. like was not even that long ago. <laughs> like, I think when you showed me, I looked it up and it was like the seventies. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's not like they did it at the end of the Civil War or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, if you're in, La- in Atlanta, you've got a whole mountain to deal with. Um, honestly, I would say it's too much trouble to screw with. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Just get a fucking couple of bazookas, take it out. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> or, every year, right, new- start having a fireworks show, but all the fireworks are just pointed at it. <laughs> <laughs> After a decade, it would just be blown to smithereens. The new laser show, we, we point actual, like, real, like... Like Death Star potent, lasers. Potent lasers at and see what happens. That would be... Okay, Atlanta... Well, eventually, there's just a hole through the whole world. You could be a racist bastard, you could be progressive, but... Let's point lasers at it, man, and see what happens. No one can, like, say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should point lasers at everything. <laughs> or death lasers? I mean, different lasers for different... I, I want to say something that rhymes with lasers. I was gonna lasers. Go, I was gonna, yeah, but that's basically just lasers. I was going to go different lasers for different blazers. James but I'd have to explain that, like... You know, if you're wearing a racist blazer, you get the death laser. If you're wearing, like, a disco blazer, then we just give you a laser to make disco it a light laser. show. Disco laser. I want to wear a disco blazer. I want a disco blazer. I got a disco shirt today. You are very disco shirt today. Yeah, I'm going real psychedelic with my shirt. <laughs> but they're also the same shirts you wear to work. It's been a while since wear I wore this one to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you see, you wear these ones when it's winter and you wear a jacket over it. Yeah. So you just get the little strip of crazy. Right, right. I'm going full crazy today. Um, anything else we want to do on this world before it collides? Nah, pack it all in. Okay. We'll, we'll pack it in at MLSFSPod at Twitter? Yes, that's yes. it. Okay, it didn't sound good coming out of me, but it came out of me. Hey. Oh, or do the same thing on Facebook. Matt and Luke Sci-Fi Sanctuary on Facebook. Uh, that's, a, that's a place to go. Yeah, um, basically go to Facebook to talk to Matt and go to Twitter to talk to me. Go to Luke Love LKP. No, I, I, I lost. <laughs> I lose. I lose. You can find my Pokemon podcast on Twitter at Luke Loves PKMN. Listen to that if you like Pokemons. Um, and you can find Matt's music at rovingsagemedia.bandcamp.com. No one needs to leave the sanctuary today. They've collided. They've blown up. No, everyone should get on their spaceship and fuck off to a new world. <laughs> That's good advice. Yeah. (laughs) Also, it's not much better than the one that I tried to get rid of.
the mirage beyond you Know that the heat only pushes behind you If you're ever in doubt Turn off your mind You will see that the stream Just moves on Events Sometimes cheat us Unwell These Are the times On which we dwell And if you can't abide Turn off your mind You will see that the stars just shine on Just moves on